everybody uh, welcome back to the channel uh, essential guide to digital jewelry design uh, where Akio and I Eva we bring you um, tutorials on how to build jewelry and um, how to use Rhino in your jewelry design workflow uh, if you haven't heard of our book yet um, and you're interested you can head on over to Gumroad or to Amazon um, the links are in the information uh, but today, what we're going to do is we are going to build a box clasp. And I'm just going to show a couple of pictures of what we mean when we say box clasp. A box clasp is a, a traditional clasp to, to close bracelets, um, pearl necklaces. Uh, you'll recognize it immediately, I'm sure. It, it works on a very simple system. And um, yeah, it, we decided this is something we haven't done yet and would be interesting to to work through a tutorial on this uh, especially since if you're going to model it 3d print it um you would have to take a few things in consideration uh, because it wouldn't be made by hand uh making it by hand you'd be using metal sheets and obviously you wouldn't do it in the same manner with the cat okay so let's head on over to rhino and have a look. So um, I'm starting with a layer called curves and what we're going to build is we're going to build three objects. We're going to build housing so I'm going to create my layers already for that. Um, I like to use colors so I can see my objects clearly when I'm working in ghosted view. We also have to build the tongue uh, which goes into the housing and finally we have the trigger which will eventually become part of the tongue and that part we do last um, what you saw on the picture was a figure of eight we could if there's enough time go into the figure of eight that's pretty simple but that might be best to do by hand uh, because it's just a piece of wire okay so first things first so the housing we're going to go straight into the housing layer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a box. I'm going to start from my center, zero, and we are going to make our housing 15 millimeters long. I'm going to make it 10 millimeters wide and I'm going to make it 4.5 millimeters high. So that's our box. That's going to be the housing in which the clasp is going to slide into and, and click into place. Now, it's pretty simple to um, create the material thickness and open the one end. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go over to our shell command. And we're going to just choose one side of the box, one of the short ends. And we are going to put in a material thickness, and I already have it. I'm going to use a material thickness of 0.7. I think it's a good material thickness to use. Uh, it's still printable and still castable. And once you've worked over the piece in uh, on the bench, it will be probably around about 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters in thickness. So that's pretty strong still. And there we go. We have a hollowed out box. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to build the space into which our trigger will fit and how I'm going to do that is I'm just simply going to build another box I'm going to build it from the center point and put my O snaps on and this box is going to be 2.5 millimeters wide and no excuse me I gave it from the center I need four Four millimeters long and 2.5 wide so I need that depth and the height is uh, in, in significant it's just high enough so you can bully it that out so let's bring that in and we're going to pull that through into our clasp we can even extend it a little bit a little bit longer okay and we're just simply going to bully in that out and there we go there we go the box the housing the box housing is done okay so what's next what's next is the tongue so for the tongue I'm gonna to go into my curves layer 
and I'm going to go into the front viewport and I'm going to build a um, rectangle. So I'm going to go from the center point again because I'm always using the midpoint on my box as my reference. And I'm going to just pull that curve out so that it kind of fits neatly into the box with more or less the same amount of space. If you had to do an offset, you'd have a, a pretty um, even thickness of around about 0 0.9 millimeters. So if we had to do an offset of this um, curve, let's just go to offset. And if I had to use a distance, which I'm going to of 0 0.7 or let's say 0 0.9, uh, it should fit neatly within the box. Okay, but we don't want a distance of 0 0.9. We want a distance of 0 0.7. And we don't want that quite yet because what I'm still going to do is I'm going to round the corners of my curve, my rectangular curve. So I'm just going to use fillet corners. And I already have a pretty neat fillet here, but I'd like it to be just a tad bit larger. It's just a bit rounder in the end here. I could even try 0.55. That's better. Great. And what we're going to do is we are going to explode this curve. And I'm going to delete that bit at the end. So we just have an open curve. And I'm going to do some editing on this curve. I'm going to use the end point here. Pull it in so that it's about two and a half millimeters away from the from the housing and the other one I'm going to take the end point pull it in but this time I'm going to raise it slightly because what we want is we actually want there to be a an angle and as you can see that angle is not enough so what we're going to do is we're going to join all our curves together again ah, there's one little curve missing in fact Wait, we can delete that little joint there and what we are going to do is we're just going to um, take this curve and we are going to connect it. Let's use the move tool for that. Move, connect the one endpoint to the other endpoint and here again I'm going to pull that curve up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all these Grab all these points here, and I'm going to use my relocate function on my gumball to relocate my gumball down to the bottom curve. Um, and I'm going to just scale that down a tad. So it's that kind of an angle. You see what, what's happening here? We've got a <clears throat> got a very, very slight angle here. And join that up. And then we're going to do an offset. Let's try that offset of 0 0.7. That's good. Ah, didn't. there we go. So let's take that and move it down so it fits neatly inside our box. Okay, that's looking good. And the next thing we want to do is we want to extrude that. Uh, before we want to extrude that, we want to close it. So we're just going to put two end lines on to create a closed curve and bring our curve into our housing and extrude it using the gumball in the into the interior of the housing leaving a little bit of playroom around both sides Okay, great. Now, what we want to do next is we want to cut away um, a bit of the top here. Now, you can do that either way, which way. You can either take your end cap, end surface, and you can bring it in slightly and down. Or you could just use a cut plane and cut it away. But I'm... Um, happy using the subsurface selection tool so there we go now what we want to do next is we want to um, create
create and uh, actually this is I'm still gonna bring the tongue top part of the tongue in a bit it's just standing out a little bit too much so the next bit is a back plate uh, for the housing a back plate into which the tongue is attached and uh, gives it some sort of stability and strength when you use your trigger and pull the clasp out to do this again we're going to use the uh, the box tool and I'm just going to go straight into my tongue layer and this should be just a little bit bigger than the housing um, so that it sits neatly up against it see there you got you got a little bit of room for play that's good what we're probably gonna have to do is bring the top out of that tongue in again so I'm just going to hide that for a moment and we're gonna bring this in even more I'm gonna bring that in around about there and you'll see why later uh, why, why that needs to be not too close to this back plate and we can just in that together to the tongue so there we go that's a bullion so now if I switch the housing off you'll see here you have a little gap that gap will be very important because you need this tongue to uh, squash down and when you send this kind of a 3d part to cast um, you might lose the subtlety of this space, this gap. You could just saw through it to open it up again, but uh, you you do want to take care there with that little bit of that little bit of uh, um, play that you need. So finally, we want the trigger, and the trigger is going to fit in neatly into the space over here that we cut out of the housing. So again, we go to the box tool. Wow, the box tool is very handy and we made it four millimeters last time or 4.5 millimeters if I remember correctly by 2.5 and the height well the height it's going to need to be fairly high you want to first of all you want to bullion it into your tongue and second of all you want it to not perfectly on the edges you want there to be a little bit of room for play here as well so let's there we go okay so let's have a look here in ghosted view in our perspective switch the housing off see there we go it's will bullion on nicely in fact yeah that's fine and it fits well into that space okay so the trigger is only thing left to do with the trigger is we're going to create little ridges so that it's easy to uh, so that it's easy to stick off the fingernail in and push this little clasp button down this little clasp trigger down first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little chamfer on the first and last first and last edges and in between that I'm going to do a little scallop and to do that I'm just going to create a little circle and we're going to duplicate those cut plane and we are going to trim this all and trim the bottoms away and trim that away and delete that cut plane and now what we're going to do is we are going to extend this a little bit
Okay. Just so that we're just going to cut these two pieces out here. So if we go in and do an extrusion here now. And a boolean difference, it should cut those two pieces away. No. That's silly. Actually, what I want to do is. Ah, oh, they're not joined. Good. Because our curves were not joined. And I'm just going to use two more cut planes here. Cut plane. In the beginning and the end. Let's flip that around. And. Let's just do a split. There we go. And with this, we are going to do a difference, brilliant difference again. There we go. Okay. So there's our little class bridge. Okay. So if I switch the housing off, what we could do here now is we could bullion the tongue and the trigger together. And there you go. There's a little box clasp very simple um you could go one step further and you could create the eight figure of eight clip on the side uh that's fairly simple if you figure clip. um Come out a little bit, build a little cylinder. It's not perfectly in the center there. And I'm putting that together. But before we do that, we need to push that. Put out, put in that together, and that to that, and on your side of your of your uh, of your trigger um, and back plate, uh, what you would do is create a little uh, wire um, a wire loop. So. Me Be careful to make that not too thin. So let's go 0 0.5, maybe two big, three, five, there we go. You'd need a fairly thin wire. Let's just measure that out. So our little space in here is currently 0 0.8 millimeters. Yeah, you'd need a, a wire of, of, yeah a, a wire of at least um 0 0.7 thick and that wire will run through here and will become your 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 wire to to close the the figure of eight clasp so um for this you can create another rectangle And where is my rectangle? It's in here. I all but stopped using the curves layer. Just change that object layer to it's easier to see. And we can again fill at the corners. I can take that fillet up to 6.5. That's good. And with this, we're going to give a um go back again to cage edit cage edit found in the box and six ah i see it's my fault what we want to do here and there 
is <clears throat> not enough points. Put the points on the wrong end. Again, cage edits. We want the UV points on six. And you I'm not paying attention. There we go. So here we go. I want to make those points bigger. It changes to back view. Same thing, we can bring this in. Okay. It's too much. You can just select some curves and needs to fit at least over. So not exactly lying correctly there it needs to be okay we're going to give this a thickness of a piping thickness of 0 0.65 rebuild that curve first okay so we got your 34 points and let's bring that down to 25 points and we can go a little bit further to 15 points to simplify that curve okay and let's do that pipe again we should have a little bit less hassle this time 0.6 Just a little bit too thick. Also, these points should move back. Let's do it again. Five point five this time. using a radius oh, we want a diameter of 0 0.5 there we go well let's actually make it now that we we there let's make it 0 0.65 it's probably a bit thicker that's good okay that's great if you want to you could go ahead and modify it the points a little bit oh well in my case i didn't have rhino history on so it's not going to help um unfortunately if i had wanted to to change the diameter now of, of my of my um change the shape of the diameter or the shape change the shape of my curve it's it's, it's not going to be possible because rhino history was off this is my mistake So what we're going to do is put record history on. We're going to repipe that with record history this time. And now if I go and change a few things on my original curve, like the shape in the center here. Just bring that out a bit. There we go. And my end curve. Since this makes sense, there we go. And this we use a little bit of cage editing again here. What we're going to do is we're going to 
There we go, and just delete that and pull in that together, pull in that to our trigger, and if we do a little relocation of our gumball again to the hinge of our figure eight clip, which should do it here. Best way to do that is to create a point here because we're not working with our point. It'll be our pivot point for our rotation to check the rotation. And now we relocate the gumball again. But this time using the point as our There we go. Now we can test our figure eight. Go. And voila. Here you have box clasp. This figure eight, there's still some work that needs to be done there, but like I said, probably better to make it out of wire, but you have the principle and um, and I hope you, you enjoyed that tutorial and uh, we, we are working on bringing you more. It's just been very busy uh, since the beginning of this year. Um, with teaching and with with projects and uh, we hope to bring you more uh, than we brought you at the beginning of this year but uh, hope you enjoyed it and have a super day cheers <laughs>